Welcome to Sustainability in the Desert. I'm your host, Kevin Gray, and we're here at Papago Park in Phoenix, the fifth largest city in the United States, to explore sustainability in our community. But first, here's what's coming up on the show. Ever wonder where your recycling goes? We'll find out what the city of Phoenix is doing to curb waste. We'll see how the history of SRP is helping to conserve water today, and why eating local is not just healthier for you, but the environment as well. All that and more coming up on the show. The City of Phoenix has a 2050 goal to provide a clean and reliable 100 year water supply to its residents. Let's see the steps they're taking to reach that goal. I'm Katherine Sorensen. I'm the director of Phoenix Water Services. Today we're out at the 24th Street Water Treatment Plant. This is a really important facility here at the base of Payestawa Peak. This is one of seven facilities we have that help supply the city with safe, clean water to drink. Our surface water treatment plants are really important to our system because the city of Phoenix relies on renewable surface water supplies for its resources that people then drink at the tap. By using the renewable surface water supplies today, we make sure that future generations have access to groundwater in times that they really need it. Colorado River supplies about 40% of the water that is used to supply demands here in the city of Phoenix, so it's a really important source for us. The Phoenix City Council approved the Colorado River Resiliency Fund in 2014. They understood the importance of making sure that the Colorado River is resilient for the long term. What this does is it helps fund really unique partnerships and ways to make sure that the Colorado River remains resilient over time. Hi, my name is Dennis Porter. I am the Assistant the Water Services Director for the City of Phoenix. Where we are right now is you're at the Tres Rios Wetlands. It's a uh, project that was constructed by the City of Phoenix, basically an environmental project. We do some polishing uh, treatment of the wastewater here, and uh, we also created a nice environment for people to come and enjoy. Right across the street from us is the 91st Avenue Wastewater Treatment Plant. Uh, we, we treat up to about 140 million gallons a day, so we can treat between the two wastewater plants that we have about two and a half million people's worth of wastewater. It is kind of a hidden oasis that not a lot of people know about. One of the really popular things that happens is bird watching. If you come out here in the winter, you can hardly see the water. There's so many birds out here. And it's, uh, Pretty cool. It is a passion project and it was also a, a partnership with some of the neighbors just to the north. Uh, it, was a, it was a combined flood control project. Clearly we're doing our part on the wastewater side just by reusing everything we have here. And then on top of that on the water side we have a pretty, uh, pretty good conservation program just on educating folks and telling them how to, how to use water more efficiently and more wisely. We, we're well prepared to go way into the future. People don't have to be worried about running out of water. We've got sufficient supplies to go way out in the future. The City of Phoenix Water Services delivers safe, clean water to more than 1.5 million people across the Valley of the Sun. And to do that, we rely on a vast amount of infrastructure. We have about 7,000 miles of water pipelines that serve over a 540 square mile service territory, 5,000 miles of sewer lines, and seven surface water treatment plants and wastewater treatment plants. So it's a lot of infrastructure and it's really important that our communities support this infrastructure because really it's the foundation of our public health and economic development. Papago Park has a rich history. Some of these mountain formations date back 15 million years. SRP also has a rich history and a fertile future in Arizona. Take a look. SRP was one of the first five federal reclamation projects authorized under the Federal Reclamation Act of 1902. Uh, and the intent of that statute was to build irrigation structures in the arid west to support agricultural development and then sell public lands back to recuperate the cost of those irrigation structures. Uh, interestingly, at the time, the majority of the land here in the Phoenix metropolitan area was, was already privately owned. And so the solution to that was for the landowners in the area to form a cooperative or an association of landowners and pledge their land as collateral to repay the cost of our linchpin system today, Theodore Roosevelt Dam. Over time, we have developed additional dams uh, downstream of Theodore Roosevelt, and that was in recognition that in an arid environment, we would continue to need additional water supplies and power to electrify the area. 
what makes this work is having a reservoir system that allows us to bridge the dry times. And so really the key is to have some sort of a system where you can collect all of the high country snowmelt and rain that runs off into our reservoirs and supply that water on a year-round basis. Uh, hydropower is a renewable energy resource. It's a, it's a green resource. Hydropower is really how SRP started in the electricity business. Uh, initially, when we were building Theodore Roosevelt Dam, we generated hydroelectric power out of that site to power the operations there. Today, we have a little over one million electric customers. We are constantly performing analyses uh, about what population estimates are going to be, uh, trying to get a good understanding so that we can uh, plan for additional power generation facilities if necessary. On the water side, it is also about working with our municipal partners and others to identify potential opportunities to, to move water, uh, to, to get to areas where it is needed. Obviously, water in the desert is a, is a finite resource, and so we need to continue to look for where those next supplies are going to come from. SRP actually does a number of different things to try and engage employees in sustainability. One of the programs that we have is a rideshare program where we promote using alternate modes of transportation. It's one of the oldest programs and it's been around for about 30 years at SRP. And this program has engaged 250 plus employees in using alternative modes of transportation. One of the more recent programs that we've been engaging employees with is the local farmers market. So we partnered with a local company to provide fresh local produce to employees. Uh, multiple times throughout the week. So this program actually encourages employees and to uh, buy local when they can. We have a variety of different programs. We have different price plans for uh, different types of customers to maximize their energy savings based on the energy that they do use. We also have uh, programs and rebates for uh, customers that are interested in saving money. Uh, SRP also subsidizes energy efficient lighting at a number of different retailers for customers. For anyone out there, there are three great ways to get involved and be more sustainable. Number one, uh, try setting your thermostat to a higher temperature when you're not home. That has the ability to save you tons of money. Number two, I would say try taking advantage of uh, public transportation or an alternative form of transportation. It's a great, great way to reduce your carbon footprint. And then the third thing I would say is to make sure to reduce and limit your shower time. And uh, that has a huge impact on the amount of water you consume. I would want the viewer to understand that, that SRP is really here to support the community. We are a community-based utility. We are here to support the goals of our customers, uh, and really our programs are designed to do that. Um, sustainability is going to be a collaborative uh, venture going forward. We're all in this together, um, and we are here to do our part in supporting the community to achieve those goals. Phoenix is the steward of more than 41,000 acres of mountain and desert preserve, including a 200-mile trail system. At Papago Park, there are plenty of hiking trails. Just head to the City of Phoenix website for a list. And here's what's coming up. We'll see how the City of Phoenix is using your trash to become a zero waste community. And farm to table is not just a health trend. We hit your ride with a local farm to see why it's better for the environment too. The city of Phoenix is on target to divert 40% of waste by 2020. Let's check out how they're taking aim at becoming a zero waste community. Hi, I'm Ginger Spencer, Public Works Director for the City of Phoenix. So we're here at our North Gateway Transfer Station. It's what we call a MRF, or our recycling plant. And this is where all of our garbage and recyclables come in the north part of town. And it opened in 2006. And it's a state-of-the-art facility, and we'd love for individuals to come get a tour and learn more about recycling. Right now, we send a million tons of trash to the landfill each and every year. Um, that's enough trash to fill our ballpark seven times. And what we know right now is currently 15% of what is actually in the garbage container can be recycled. So we want to pull that material, the cardboard, plastic, paper, we want to pull those materials, even glass, out of the garbage container, get it into the right recycling container, the blue container, so that we can recycle that material and repurpose it. 
By sending waste to the landfill, what that is is a linear model where we actually create a product, we use it as consumers, and then when we're done with it, at the end of the day, we throw it away and it goes to the landfill. By diverting waste from the landfill is to create a circular economy where basically we're taking that product, we make it, we use it, and instead of sending it to the landfill, we actually repurpose it and turn it into a new product. Reimagine Phoenix is our initiative to divert 40% of our waste from the landfill by the year 2020. Right now we are at a 30% diversion rate and so we've got two and a half more years to get there. Hi, my name is Lucas Mariacher. I'm the Zero Waste Coordinator for the City of Phoenix. Along with our Reimagine Phoenix goal of 40 by 20, we actually have a zero waste goal. So uh, if you don't know what zero waste is, it's essentially trying to get to zero waste as possible. So that means diverting you know, up to or around 90% of the waste generated in the city of Phoenix. And we're going out and educating the community on why it's important to get to zero waste and why it's you know, more important to actually reduce what you're producing in the first place. We're promoting reduce, reuse, recycle, and that goes along right along with zero waste. So education with recycling is extremely important. So my job as a zero waste coordinator is actually to standardize the messaging we have going on. A very new campaign, what we call top 10 in the bin, that's really just the top 10 most common items we want in the recycling streams. Thankfully, we have the most innovative uh, university in the country, and we take advantage of that. So we have a partnership with ASU and what we call the Resource Innovation Solutions Network. So what we use them for is essentially a research arm. So they're really helping um, analyze uh, our programs and enhance them is, again, what is what Reimagine Phoenix is all about. We are partnering with them on our Resource Innovation Campus where we are going to build an incubator for startup and emerging companies who want to come and take our waste and transform it into a resource. What we're doing is creating economic development opportunities from our trash. Your mom probably reminded you to not waste food, and she was right. On average, Americans throw away 475 pounds of food each year per person. Let's take a look at how Maricopa County is making sure food waste is kept to a minimum. Vitalist Health Foundation is a, a nonprofit. We are a public foundation. And so we have the privilege of being very focused on our mission. And our mission is to improve the health of Arizonans through funding, through uh, coalition building, through policy and advocacy work. So we noticed that there was a lack of coordination among policy-related efforts and programmatic-related efforts. We started talking to a number of our partners, and that has evolved into the Maricopa County Food System Coalition. The coalition's goal is to help to develop a healthy and thriving food system in Maricopa County. And to that end, um, what the City of Phoenix is trying to do to improve access to healthy food. Some of these locations that some people call food deserts. In many cases, there are large areas without a grocery store or a healthy food store. At the same time, there are maybe a fair number of fast food restaurants or corner stores that are selling unhealthy food. In South Phoenix and Maryvale, you have a large number of these areas. The reason I work with small farmers is a lot of small farmers don't have the infrastructure and logistical support to get rid of a lot of their products. And typically, a lot of these farmers that I dealt with when I first met them, they're not able to sell all their products. So in other words, it turns into compost, they feed it to the neighbor's animals, or it just gets put in the garbage. In our demonstration farm, we compost. So a lot of the produce that we get from the local farms goes into the school kitchen. What gets not used, we compost and then put it back into our demonstration farm. 40% of the food we produce is wasted. As a dietitian, you know, I see nutrients lost and I think there's been some emerging research. If we look at that food wasted and we analyze the nutrients that are in there, that could help us meet some deficiencies that we're suffering as you know, a population. And so it's just wasted nutrients, addition to a lot of money and labor and hard work. I think it's a valuable place to put some efforts around education because it's it's going to take a culture shift. It can ha only happen when brains and minds come together. So these are some of the things I think have been the benefits of coming together. You know, one of our partners on the coalition says that we're trying to help feed the line at our food banks and then also shorten it. And that takes a lot of different organizations to make that happen. Food is a highly personal thing and it touches each of us individually, but us as a community, it contributes to our health, 
emotional well-being, it cultural identity, it contributes to the economic health and well-being of our region. The work that we're doing here is addressing a lot more than just food. We're talking about our economy, we're talking about transportation and housing, and um, we're making hopefully uh, an impact in our communities. One way the city is striving to eliminate food deserts is the Farmer's Market Zoning Ordinance. It was updated to remove barriers and reduce fees to encourage the establishment of farmer's markets in more areas. Up next, ride along as we follow produce from a local farm to a restaurant and find out why that journey is better for the environment. Having fun exploring community, culture, food, imas with sous vide? Head on over to yourview.com for more videos. Farm to table isn't just some trend. It's actually a great way to stay healthy and save the environment. We hitched a ride with Stern Produce to see how it all works. I'm Kristen Osgood. I am the Sustainability Coordinator at Stern Produce. This year, 2017, is our 100 year anniversary. We have been around since 1917 and we started as a grower with a spot on the Phoenix Produce Market. And then we turned slowly to distribution many years after that. As our 100 year anniversary, it was important to us to launch a standalone but fully functioning local program to support our local farms. Our program is Arizona Fresh Together. We want to be the farm to table partner and we, we really are the two that's in the farm to table phrase. My name is Joseph Martinez. I'm a co-owner of Arizona Microgreens. We're a small urban farm located in Phoenix, Arizona. Arizona has a rich history of family run farms and we're really happy to be part of changing the perception that this is not something of the past, you know? This is not Arizona in the 18 or 1900s, you know? This is actually one of the futures for Arizona. There's a tremendous variety of produce and agriculture in the state of Arizona. Partners like Stern are, are helping to flip the perception. We're not a state that has to import everything. Actually, we can produce a tremendous variety and abundance here within Arizona. We grow a highly perishable product. If you tried to grow this in Mexico or California, by the time it would get here, it wouldn't have any flavor. Visually, it wouldn't look amazing at all. But the chefs who insist on working with locally grown microgreens, they see a huge difference. And the flavor is just, you can't find anything like that that's been grown out of state. My name's Brett Viber. I'm the owner and executive chef at Cartwright Modern Cuisine in Cave Creek, Arizona. To walk onto the farms, there, there's something exciting about it. Fresh and local is what helps the community, and it all ends with good, clean, healthy food. I bought this restaurant four months ago, and uh, right around that time is when I was introduced to Stern, and, and that's when the Arizona Fresh Together program is really gonna fit our needs. Just knowing that we're who we're getting it from, where we're getting it from. There's no other produce company that I know doing that. It's been a, a flawless relationship. Most chefs use distributors at some level or another, and if we can be their partner and solutions provider and help them source more locally, at the same time building livelihood creation and bolstering the local farms so we have more food resiliency for Arizona, that's where we want to be. It's a beautiful thing seeing the way that a chef puts together a dish it's actually a celebration of the abundance and the diversity of what's available in Arizona. And when you enter into partnerships like what we have with Stern, where there's belief that Arizona Fresh Together is a project that we'll be working on for the next 10, 20 years. It's very exciting, actually. Want to try eating local foods? Head to Local First website for everything from farms to community gardens. And all of us can be a hero when it comes to saving the environment. When we come back, we'll meet an Arizona man doing his part.
For more great videos highlighting all that's happening across Arizona, visit yourview.com. Rock climbing is just one of the many activities here at Papago Park. And it's a rock climber who's making a difference by protecting our environment. Introducing the 2017 Cox Conserves Hero. Climbers here in Tucson wanted to take care of the spaces that we climb here on Mount Lemmon. Get it. Nice job. Cossiform to provide framework and structure to support them in doing all those really cool projects. My name's Eric Safaya, and I'm the president of the Climbing Association of Southern Arizona. Rock climbing happens predominantly on public lands, and here in Tucson it happens on Mount Lemmon, which is administered by the Forest Service. The work that we do up here, which includes erosion control, restoration projects, trail maintenance, litter pickups, graffiti removal off the natural rock surfaces, that benefits more than just climbers. That's good for the entire Tucson community. We're gonna benefit Picnickers, backpackers, hikers, bird lovers, equestrians, mountain bikers, everybody that uses this part of the Forest Services Trail. Pretty much anybody who wants to come spend a day on this beautiful mountain. My job in CASA is to support, like Belang a Climber, all that awesome work that these very, very talented people need to do the amazing thing that they want to do. Awesome. Thank you for being the kind of climbers who want to give back to their community. Every time I see you out here, I get goosebumps. Thank you. Before we go, we gave a lot of good information about how our community is striving to be truly sustainable. But here are a few more helpful hints on how you can impact your own sustainability. Go vegetarian once a week. It takes roughly 2,000 gallons of water to produce a single pound of beef. Consider a Xeriscape yard. There are lots of vibrant plants and bushes you can use in your backyard that require very little water. And finally, instead of buying bottled water, get a reusable water bottle. We want to thank the City of Phoenix for letting us hang out at Papago Park today. I'm your host, Kevin Gray, and thank you for watching Sustainability in the Desert. <laughs>